Thank you very much. Thank you. Members of Congress, members of the Cabinet, honored guests, and fellow Americans, it is my privilege to address you tonight from the East Room of the White House. We are gathered together this evening for a truly momentous occasion. I have long been told that the most important decision a president can make is the appointment of a Supreme Court justice. Well, in just a few moments, we will proudly swear in the newest member of the United States Supreme Court, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Joining us for tonight's ceremony is every sitting Supreme Court Justice. Chief Justice Roberts, thank you. Justice Thomas, thank you. Justice Ginsburg, thank you. Justice Breyer, thank you, Justice. Justice Alito, Justice Sotomayor, Justice Kagan, thank you, and Justice Gorsuch. I would also like to send our deep appreciation to Maureen Scalia, the wife of the late, great Antonin Scalia, and also to our White House counsel, Don McGahn. Thank you, Don. Thank you. We are thrilled to be joined this evening by Justice Anthony Kennedy. Justice Kennedy, America owes you a profound debt of gratitude for a lifetime of noble service to our nation. And I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Very special and treasured guests tonight are Justice Kavanaugh's amazing wife, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. And their two beautiful daughters, Margaret and Liza. And we are also joined by Justice Kavanaugh's mom and dad, Martha and Ed. Thank you. I would like to begin tonight's proceeding differently than perhaps any other event of such magnitude. On behalf of our nation, I want to apologize to Brett and the entire Kavanaugh family for the terrible pain and suffering you have been forced to endure. Those who step forward to serve our country deserve a fair and dignified evaluation not a campaign of political and personal destruction based on lies and deception. What happened to the Kavanaugh family violates every notion of fairness, decency, and due process. Our country, a man or a woman, must always be presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty. And with that, I must state that you, sir, under historic scrutiny, were proven innocent. Thank you.
Margaret and Eliza, your father is a great man. He is a man of decency, character, kindness, and courage, who has devoted his life to serving his fellow citizens. And now, from the bench of our nation's highest court, your father will defend the eternal rights and freedoms of all Americans. You know that. We are joined tonight by a leader who has never wavered in his support and devotion to the rule of law and to Brett Kavanaugh's elevation. He's worked very, very hard, and he truly has done just an incredible and wonderful job for the American people. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Thank you, Mitch. Please, stand up. I think that's the biggest hand he's ever received. They just don't. They don't get it, Mitch. You're great. Thank you. Very much appreciate it. I'd like to thank another man whose principled leadership has earned widespread admiration, Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Senator Chuck Grassley. Thank you, Chuck. You. We are grateful to all of the senators on the Judiciary Committee who fought so hard for this confirmation. Senators Lindsey Graham, John Cornyn, Orrin Hatch, Mike Lee, Ted Cruz, Ben Sass, Jeff Flake, Mike Crapo, Tom Tillis, and John Kennedy. And thank you also to Rob Portman, sitting right here. Thank you, Rob Portman. And finally, we are indebted to Senator Susan Collins for her brave and eloquent speech and her declaration that when passions are most inflamed, fairness is most in jeopardy. How true, how true. Brett Kavanaugh is a man of outstanding intellect, a brilliant scholar, and his credentials are unsurpassed. A graduate of both Yale College and Yale Law School, he has taught at Harvard, Yale, and Georgetown. When he's not working or with his family, he's giving back to his community. He spent 26 years in public service, and just like Justice Gorsuch, he clerked for Justice Kennedy. For the last 12 years, Brett was a judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, widely regarded as our nation's second highest court. During his tenure, he authored over 300 opinions distinguished by their masterful and impartial reasoning. Known as a judge's judge, he is a fair-minded, unbiased, and even-handed person. He understands that justice must be divorced from the passions of the day, tethered instead to the enduring foundation of our republic, the Constitution. Justice Kavanaugh fills the place left by Anthony Kennedy. Soon, Justice Kennedy will administer the judicial oath to Brett Kavanaugh, just as he did last year for Justice Gorsuch. This will be the first time a Supreme Court justice has ever sworn in a former clerk to take his seat. A beautiful moment which reminds us that freedom is a tradition passed down from generation to generation. And that's a big statement, and I want to thank you for that so much. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. 
Margaret and Eliza's presence tonight reminds us what his historic event, All About Your Father, is all about. It's about what kind of a nation we're going to be and what kind of a country our children will inherit. It is up to each of us and to all Americans watching tonight to answer that question. It is up to us to reclaim our heritage of equal and impartial justice. It is up to us to rededicate ourselves to the traditions and wisdom of our founders. And it is up to us to renew the bonds of love, loyalty, and affection that link us all together as one great American family. Let us pray we are successful in this task. And let us pray that all of America's children will grow up in a country that is fair and just and safe and strong and free. And let us ask God to bless Justice Kavanaugh and his family as they embark on this incredible journey together. I now invite Justice Brett Kavanaugh to come forward and to take the judicial oath. Thank you very much. Justice Kavanaugh, are you ready to take the oath? I am. Will you please repeat after me? I, Brett M. Kavanaugh, do solemnly swear. I, Brett M. Kavanaugh, do solemnly swear. That I will administer justice without respect to persons. That I will administer justice without respect to persons. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. And do equal right to the poor and to the rich. <laughs> and that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. As Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Under the Constitution and laws of the United States. Under the Constitution and laws of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Mr. President, thank you for the great honor of appointing me to serve as a Justice of the Supreme Court. I've seen firsthand your deep appreciation for the vital role of the American judiciary. I am grateful for your steadfast, unwavering support throughout this process. And I'm grateful to you and Mrs. Trump for the exceptional, overwhelming courtesy you have extended to my family and me. Mr. President, thank you for everything. I am honored to serve on a Supreme Court headed by Chief Justice John Roberts. Chief Justice Roberts is a principled, independent, and inspiring leader for the American judiciary. As a country, we are fortunate to have John Roberts as Chief Justice of the United States. I'm honored to serve alongside all of my new colleagues, each of whom I know, 
and each of whom I greatly admire and deeply respect. All nine of us revere the Constitution. Article three of the Constitution provides that the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is an institution of law. It is not a partisan or political institution. The justices do not sit on opposite sides of an aisle. We do not caucus in separate rooms. The Supreme Court is a team of nine, and I will always be a team player on the team of nine. As a new justice on the Supreme Court, I understand the responsibility that I bear. Some 30 years ago, standing here in the East Room with President Reagan, Anthony Kennedy took the oath to be a new justice of the Supreme Court. Justice Kennedy became one of the most consequential justices in American history. I served as Justice Kennedy's law clerk in 1993. To me, Justice Kennedy is a mentor, a friend, and a hero. On the Supreme Court, he was a model of civility and collegiality. He fiercely defended the independence of the judiciary and zealously guarded the individual liberties secured by the Constitution. Justice Kennedy established a legacy of liberty for ourselves and our posterity. I will always be humbled and proud to sit in Justice Kennedy's seat on the Supreme Court. Thank you. I thank the members of the United States Senate, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, for his leadership and steady resolve. I thank Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley for his wisdom and fairness. And I give special gratitude to Senators Rob Portman, Susan Collins, Joe Manchin, John Kyle, and Lindsey Graham. They are credit to the country and the Senate. I'll be forever grateful to each of them and to all the senators who carefully considered my nomination. Presiding over the final vote in the Senate on Saturday was Vice President Pence. I'm grateful to the Vice President for his sound advice and faithful support. I thank counsel to the President Don McGahn, who was a warrior for fairness and performed his critical duties in the finest traditions of our Constitution. Thank you. I thank all the outstanding people in the White House, the Department of Justice, and the Senate who worked day and night on this nomination. One of a federal judge's most important responsibilities is to hire four new law clerks each year. The law clerks are recent law school graduates and they work in the judge's chambers for one year. They're among the best and brightest young lawyers in America and they become the future leaders of the legal profession. I thank my former law clerks who devoted so much time and energy to support me during the confirmation process. <laughs> Inspired by my mom, who was a trailblazer for women in the law, I've worked hard throughout my career to promote the advancement of women. Women still face many barriers in the American workplace and all of us have a responsibility to address that problem. During my 12 years on the DC circuit, a majority of my law clerks were women, and almost all of them went on to clerk at the Supreme Court. A clerkship on the Supreme Court is one of the most coveted achievements and credentials in American law. I'm proud that all four of my newly hired law clerks at the Supreme Court are women a first in the history of the Supreme Court. <laughs> I 
Tonight, I thank all my friends, so many amazing and fearless friends uh, from my high school days, college, law school, clerking, the Bush White House, including President George W. Bush. From the judiciary, teaching, coaching, playing sports, the vibrant, loyal, and tight-knit Catholic community here in the D.C. area, and so many others. Ashley and I are grateful for their prayers and for the prayers from the thousands and thousands of people we have heard from throughout America. When I give advice to young people or speak to students, I tell them, cherish your friends, look out for your friends, lift up your friends, love your friends. I love all my friends. I thank my family. My mom, Martha, and my dad, Ed, are here. I'm their only child. <laughs> my mom was one of Maryland's earliest women prosecutors and trial judges. My dad taught me his work ethic and love of sports. They've given me a lifetime of love, and I'm forever grateful to them. My daughters, Margaret and Liza, are smart, strong, awesome girls. They're in the middle of fall lacrosse, looking forward to the upcoming basketball season. <laughs> I thank their teachers for giving them the day off tomorrow so that they can come watch two cases being argued at the Supreme Court. <laughs> My wife, Ashley, is a proud West Texan from Abilene, Texas, graduate of Abilene Cooper Public High School, University of Texas at Austin. She's the dedicated town manager of our local community. She's got a deep faith. She's an awesome mom, a great wife. She is a rock. I thank God every day for Ashley and my family. The Senate confirmation process was contentious and emotional. That process is over. My focus now is to be the best justice I can be. I take this office with gratitude and no bitterness. On the Supreme Court, I will seek to be a force for stability and unity. My goal is to be a great justice for all Americans and for all of America. I will work very hard to achieve that goal. I was not appointed to serve one party or one interest, but to serve one nation. America's constitution and laws protect every person of every belief and every background. Every litigant in the Supreme Court can be assured that I will listen to their arguments with respect and an open mind. Every American can be assured that I will be an independent and impartial justice, devoted to equal justice under law. Although the Senate confirmation process tested me, as it has tested others, it did not change me. My approach to judging remains the same. A good judge must be an umpire, a neutral and impartial decider who favors no litigant or policy. A judge must be independent and must interpret the law, not make the law. A judge must interpret statutes as written, and a judge must interpret the Constitution as written, informed by history and tradition and precedent. In the wake of the Senate confirmation process, my approach to life also remains the same. I will continue to heed the message of Matthew 25, I will continue to volunteer to serve the least fortunate among us. 
I will continue to coach, teach, and tutor. I will continue to strive to be a good friend, colleague, husband, and dad. As in the past, our nation today faces challenges and divisions. But I am an optimist. I live on the sunrise side of the mountain. I see the day that is coming, not the day that is gone. I am optimistic about the future of America and the future of our independent judiciary, the crown jewel of our constitutional republic. As a justice on the Supreme Court, I will always strive to preserve the Constitution of the United States and the American rule of law. Thank you all. Kavanaugh and the White House tried to put a period on the sentence after the most tumultuous month of his life, certainly, sworn Ladies in as the 114th the the Supreme the Court Justice uh, about Thank three you. months after he was nominated in that same space by President Trump. Uh, and a lot uh, to talk about, about what happened in that East Room of the White House. We see Ruth Bader Ginsburg there. Uh, she was the only uh, of the eight justices there to watch the ceremony who did not clap when uh, Kavanaugh came out. We see Clarence Thomas with a big hug there. The other liberals, Stephen Breyer, uh, Sonia Sotomayor, Elena Kagan, uh, they all uh, clapped as, as uh, Kavanaugh came out. Uh, and then the president uh, gave a, a pretty fiery speech for the occasion, uh, calling what's happened in recent weeks uh, the politics of personal destruction and saying Kavanaugh has been proven innocent the justice himself, though, took a much more conciliatory tone, uh, saying the Supreme Court is not a partisan institution. He plans to be a team player and insisting, uh, I thought notably, that this process didn't change me. He said, uh, I finish it with no bitterness and uh, a, a promise to be a justice who will focus on the stability and unity of the court. Caitlin uh, Yui Burns is uh, with me here at the desk. Uh, Caitlin, a, a lot to, to dig through in this last half hour. Um, but if we can step back, my goodness, two and a half years ago, Merrick Garland uh, mm -hmm. nominated as a justice, uh, Democrats fine. and liberals ready to take control of the court, and now two and a mm -hmm. half years later, a massive victory for the conservative movement. Right now they have two uh, Supreme Court justices and especially with this seat replacing Kennedy who was considered the swing seat on this court. Uh, there is a lot of, of criticism from Democrats that this will move the court to the right. What was really interesting was that Kavanaugh spoke and that he tried to hit two different points. First of all, he tried to strike that conciliatory tone and make it clear that he wants to be bipartisan, nonpartisan, that he takes this job as a judge seriously. Remember, during his confirmation hearing, uh, during the uh, testimony, after the testimony from Christine Blasey Ford, there was a lot of criticism of the way in which he handled that, that he expressed anger, that there were questions raised about his temperament and fitness for the court. He is trying to kind of smooth that over here. He also talked a lot about women. Of course, yep. uh, that is the biggest part of this story. He said that he has picked four women to clerk from him, which would be uh, history making for the court. And he very much played that up into the speech. So trying to move forward from what has been a contentious battle 
battle in terms of the confirmation fight, but also has to know that this is something that will continue to linger. We're heading into a midterm election year. These emotions and uh, the, the reaction to this very still very raw and a lot of folks um, having very mixed reactions. Uh, to put it mildly, Katie Watson is a White House reporter for CBSNews.com. Uh, she's in the East Room. Uh, Katie, I've rarely heard that room so raucous uh, paint the scene uh, that you just saw there. Certainly. Well, one of the th first things I would say is that when Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell walked in, there was resounding applause and a standing ovation even. This is really seen as a huge victory for Republicans and the president after this uh, undeniably contentious last few weeks. So I would say it was certainly a, a, an air of celebration here at the White House um, as the president's second Supreme Court nominee uh, was celebrated and confirmed and sworn in for a second time. Uh, the president made it political tonight, so I feel okay turning to politics uh, so, so quickly after the swearing-in so, ceremony. Uh, despite so many people feeling so bad about this process, uh, Republicans, including Mitch McConnell, have suggested recently this could be good for them in the midterms. Why do they think so? Yeah, certainly. Well, the president himself has called it a rallying cry for the GOP. Um, I think that Republicans ahead of this election have been a little bit uh, lukewarm, if you will. But many Republicans I've spoken to say that this uh, Kavanaugh, entire Kavanaugh situation has really riled up the base and given them an issue that they can um, surround themselves uh, around and really, as the president put it, um, become a rallying cry for the base for many. So we're just a few weeks out from the midterms, of course. We'll see if that momentum holds, but it's one of the few things that the GOP really feels that they can hold on to right now. The other thing it's done is it's coalesced a fractured Republican Party. All these never Trumpers, uh, when it was a conservative uh, nominee being put up, all of a sudden you saw a, a, a consensus around Republicans and conservatives that we really haven't seen in a couple years. We saw Kavanaugh name check George W. Bush, in whom uh, White House he worked for. And though the president may have smirked a bit, the room applauded. Uh, were there any signs uh, in the room of these two parts of the Republican Party being in the same space and for the first time in a long time being on the same page? Well, not tonight. I would say it was certainly just an air of unity throughout the room. Um, it, it was, I would add, uh, just as a note of color, fascinating to see all now nine of the current Supreme Court justices in the room at the same time. I was trying to get a, a read on their reactions from the angle where I was at. Uh, they were, you know, pretty, I wouldn't say stone-faced, uh, but very much uh, respectful, looking on even of the ones who will probably disagree with Kavanaugh on the court. Uh, but as far as the individuals who were here, it was certainly many people who have helped get Kavanaugh confirmed or have talked him up on Fox News. Uh, so around the room, I would say certainly while there were some very much establishment Republicans who may not have always or may not always be in line with the president on everything, everyone was unified tonight, Brooks. Yeah, I'm curious if you did see any more what what you saw of the other eight, because they were in our shot only at the beginning. And then I think I saw one cutaway where Stephen Breyer seemed to chuckle at a joke, but it was hard to get a look uh, at the other justices. From what we saw, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg seemed not to applaud when Kavanaugh came out. Uh, could you see any interaction? Did any of them go up to Kavanaugh at the end? I don't think they had a chance. What did you see? Sure. Well, I would that reaction or lack thereof, I guess, from Ruth Bader Ginsburg was probably the most telling moment, the most interesting response for the most part, at least from the angle where I was, where I could see a handful of the justices. They were all very much just looking on, respectful. And um, Kavanaugh himself said that, you know, hey, this is a team. This is a team of nine. He recognized that it was a contentious process. He didn't really talk about the allegations, although the president touched on them. Um, but he said Kavanaugh really tried to make the case tonight that, hey, I know it's been a little bit of a contentious process, but I am a team player. I'm going to be an impartial judge. So it was an air of unity and at least one of respect um, from the justices and the ones who may not agree with Kavanaugh on every decision or agree with the process. Um, Caitlin, uh, here at the desk, uh, what else struck you about this and, and, and how it ends what's been an incredibly contentious chapter uh, 
in that town and in this country. Well, they're certainly trying to close this chapter, but again, we're in a midterm election season, and this is something that I think both parties are going to continue to harp on. Katie brought up a good point, which is that this has been a rallying cry for the Republican Party and something that has coalesced the Republicans around Donald Trump, and it's also something they hope to uh, keep up over the next couple of weeks. That could be difficult to do. We'll see if they can do that. Meanwhile, Democrats still feel uh, burned by this, and they still feel energized by the response, the negative response to Kavanaugh. Their base and has to this, be energized by this. How could uh, they not? Exactly. So the question I have is whether the Supreme Court fight now becomes an organizing principle for Democrats the way it has traditionally been for Republicans. We see that Republicans tend to turn out for the possibility to shape the makeup of the courts, not only the Supreme Court, but judgeships around the country. Now we're starting to see Democrats say, we need to get involved in that fight. We need to get people to come out and vote in order to shape the courts. That hasn't been something that's worked for them in the past. We'll see if it starts to be different this time around. And this is an example of elections having consequences. And I think that will be the message coming from Democrats, but also coming from Republicans. I think you'll hear them say the same tune, kind of talking about how much this really matters. Uh, Judge Kavanaugh will be part of this first ever oral arguments tomorrow morning, uh, a case on what constitutes a violent felony. And it begins for him and Caitlin Watson and Caitlin Yui Burns. We thank you both uh, for your time. We're going to take a quick break. Thank Much you. more news ahead. You're streaming CBSN. On the CBS Evening News, from the hurricane zone, Florence turns it deadly. At 12 noon, high tide rolled in. Right now, you can't tell the rivers from the roads. It's bad. It's a lot of wind, a lot of trees. This is a massive oak tree that was...